次来了。Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, Mr. So oh, Pak Bambang Brojonegoro, Minister of National Development Planning, Mr. Aditya Matu, Chief Economist of the East Asia and Pacific Region of the World Bank. Mr. Arianto Patunru, Researcher and Fellow at the Uncordon Department of Economic, Australian National University. Uh, Angito Abimayu, Chairperson of the Department of Economic and Business, Vocational College, University of Gajamada, colleague from the World Bank Office, Jakarta, ladies and gentlemen. Again, uh, let me welcome Mr. Adi Yamatu to Indonesia and to our office at the Ministry of Development Planning, Bapenas. It is uh, truly an honor for us to be able to host the Bapenas Economic Public Lecture Series, Reform for Recovery. At this lecture, Bapenas and the World Bank jointly organized the event and have Mr. Matu as our speaker today. I would like to personally thank Pak Bambang, terima kasih yang telah hadir for joining us as the discussion together with Mr. Arianto Panturu. Terima kasih Pak. From Australian National University. I do thank you also to Pa Angito Abimanyu to chair our public lecture session. Since the first outbreak of COVID 19 in January 2020, COVID 19 has spread globally and created the global crisis. Indonesia unexpectedly generally is affected and still has to encounter the impact of the long COVID-19 pandemic. As today, Indonesia had around 6.65 million confirmed positive cases of COVID-19 and there have been close to 160,000 deaths related to COVID-19 reported. However, the situation is actually getting better now. Fewer people getting infected with milder symptoms, fewer number of dead patients, and also loosened travel restrictions. Those all inevitably are the impact of massive vaccination throughout the country. As the pandemic is diminishing, the economy continues to improve and show trend of recovery. Indonesia economy started to recover in the quarter four of 2021. The growth continues to accelerate and reach the peak in quarter third 2022, which grew at the rate 5.72% year on year. We are projecting that Indonesian economy will grow around 5.4% in the full year of 2020. 2022, and it is expected to continue with a solid growth in 2023, with a growth target of 5.3 to 5.5 percent in our national development plan of 2023. As the global economy started to recover, international trade has also recovered. Indonesia trade performance is also benefit from the increase of commodity prices, in particular coal and palm oil. In quarter three, 2022, Indonesia trade recorded a surplus by 
1.92 billion US dollar, which is a 12.58% growth compared to the same period in 2021. <clears throat> it is supported by the increase of Indonesia export of goods by 19.11% in quarter three, 2022, while the export of services grew by 82.84% year on year as the international borders are reopened and tourist visits increases. While the economy continues to show a trend recovery, recovery it is beyond doubt that the COVID-19 pandemic has left economic scars, such as lower productivity of the economy. On the other side, Indonesia has the vision to become a developed country with the fifth largest GDP by 2045. In order to do that, Indonesia has an aspiration to escape from the middle income trap by 2043. With the scars of a pandemic is still hovering around, business as usual will not bring us to the vision of 2045. Therefore, Indonesia decides that we should begin the economic transformation to provide a strong foundation and solid stage for Indonesia's vision of 2045. To achieve escaping the middle income trap before 2045, Indonesia should not only maintain economic growth, but also to pursue inclusive and sustainable growth. In order to do this, policymakers should take a look and closely monitor some aspects that can deter inclusive and sustainable growth. First, policymakers should be able to mitigate the uncertainties and downside risks that may happen in the future. The government should create innovative policies to minimize the impacts of global economic slowdown. Secondly, we need to be aware of an increasing burden that has been foreshadowing several countries. Inflation abroad has been attracted more capital outflow from region and causing a depreciation of exchange rate countries in East Asia and Pacific countries. Not to mention the vegan exchange rate is also contributing to domestic inflation. Thirdly, policymakers should handle the distortion with appropriate means. The government should manage to control the cost of living and the cost of production growth to protect both households and firms. Ladies and gentlemen, during these three years, rise policy measures have been taken as an emergency response to the pandemic and recent situation for the sake of saving the economy in the short run. However, responding to a short-term volatility should not be a subject to a trade-off to achieving a long-term vision for the vision of Indonesia in 2045. Indonesia needs a long-term growth which is inclusive and sustainable. We understand that building global economic resilience after COVID-19 pandemic is a responsibility of all of us, and exceptionally countries, gentlemen, the government, international organizations, private sectors, and others. Collaboration across sectors and regions is very much needed. Sound policies are needed to ensure the economy continuously recovers stronger and provide prosperity to our people. Therefore, we are here today to learn and gain insightful knowledge about understanding the post-pandemic situation and the prospect for the global economy from our prominent speaker and discussion today. I am looking forward to a fruitful discussion for enhancing our perspective and providing better policy for the future of Indonesia. I do thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.